Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. It is me, Sondermarken, here, and we are going to be doing a tutorial today. I know, tutorials, fanciness. So let's start game and let's go into the uh, Sondermarken. Yeah, and the reason why it says no flights is because after I recorded that last episode, guess what happened? Yeah, I accidentally pressed end flight on the space station. No matter, we'll just go and rebuild it. But here we go, we're going to do a tutorial on the VAB since there's lots of new cool things. And as you can see up here, in the top left, this is what happens when you enter the VAB. You get your standard capsules that we got before, but now we have four new ones. This one is for people, this is for the Kerbals, um, it's just for a lander type situation, it's easier to use for a lander. Um, but then th we have these. These are probes. They uh, they range in sizes from uh, that big. Then we have that, and then we have this one. Uh, and these require power. Each one requires well, these two require. Um, actually, no, they all require the same amount of electrical charge. It's um, their mass is just different. This one's the lightest. This is the second lightest. This is the heaviest, from what I can see. Um, but let's continue on. So this is the first page of propulsion we have. Uh, they, they finally bought like the, um, the fuel lines in this one, which I like a lot better than trying to scour through other tabs. Then we have our fuel tanks. Uh, we have all these different sizes to choose from. That's a double long of that. That's a you know a half. This is a half of that. Uh, so that's a lot of fuel tanks to choose from. We also have the uh, AV fuel, and we have this fuel, which is for um for this engine right here, which is a small engine for probes actually. So. As you can see, it fits perfectly with a probe. What you can do is just stick that, if I can grab it, stick that on, bam, bam, and I put it inside it. Great. But you get what I mean. And then we also here we have our standard engine, our standard jet engine. The other jet engine is for some reason on this page, which I don't get. We have the aero spike on this page also. Um. All the engines that we already know quite a bit. Our vectoring engine right there. That's the small engine for the big part, and this is the small engine for the small part. Lots of stuff to deal with. All the different type of fuel connectors. Um, then we have our radial engine that we're used to. Uh, radial um, RCS fuel. Our RCS tanks, our Sepatron, double long solid rocket booster, regular solid rocket booster. They last a lot longer than they did before. No, this, this is like a triple long. That's cool. Um, then this is a type of fuel tank where you can just stick it. Where is it? Where? There it is. You can stick it right there and you don't lose any space. See? You just put something right there. It's. Um, it's pretty useful. Um, and that's all for the uh, propulsion type stuff. So let's pull up a new one. Okay, let's go to control. Here we have our SAS and ASAS. Uh, a lot smaller, which I like. Here's the big ASAS. Avionics package, RCS ports, that's just single, and that's multi, and that's all for that page. Let's go to structural. Here's our decouplers. Let's go through the couplers first. Actually, let's put a new page on real quick. Actually, I'll just leave that right there. So, decouplers, we have lots of them. There's the huge one. Um, here's the regular one. There's another one for the regular one. One of these, uh, I think it's that one. Yeah, this one explodes more, so it forces each side out a bit more. And this is 
even smaller, so like for um, the probes. And it's equivalent to those two. Um, so then you have your adapters, all that fun stuff, structural pieces. We have three different decouplers, standard decouplers. There's another decoupler back here, I know. There, that's, that's the other decoupler. Um, small, medium, large, and it puts extra space, and then you have the hard point decoupler. We also have a bi uh, and a, the tri stack couplers, which is cool since we have that. We have the um, six sided uh, node type thingy, which is cool. Multi point connector. And then we have just the struts and the strut thingies. Yeah, strut thingies. I'm good at this, aren't I? Okay, now let's go to Arrow. We have canards, you have uh, tail connectors. We have now um, intakes. Here's a that's an engine cell. Radial body. Uh, yeah, these these are the standard intakes you'll be dealing with. You have nose cones in this one. Aerodynamic nose cones. If there was aerodynamics. <laughs> All your wing pieces and canards and winglets. And also, you don't need to use um, this piece and uh, this together now. You can just use this piece because this one has its own little flap thingy in the back. So that's cool. It's a uh, the uh, Delta Deluxe winglet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's go to utilities. We have battery banks. That's it's a convenient battery type situation that holds um, 500, and these just hold 100 like units of electrical charge. You have the hitchhiker. This can store up to I think four. Let's look. Yeah, four Kerbals. Um, so you can like put this on your space station and store a ton of Kerbals up there, just for the heck of it. Uh, docking ports. There's the big that is really cool and folds open. There's the one that goes to it, and then there's the junior one, which the junior ones are just not as useful. Uh, you have this one, which is for like space planes. It like you 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 stick this right there and you mount it horizontally on there, which is cool. Um, here's an ion propulsion. We'll go over that later. You have your ladders, solar rays. This is the big huge one that folds out. There's a new landing strut that's uh, small and can be used for like um, uh, the probes, which is cool. We also have new parachutes. Uh, this parachute is a drogue chute, so it won't stop you from um, completely dying, but it'll deploy higher in the atmosphere to slow you down a bit more. So then you can later deploy your other parachute. This is the large parachute. This is the um, radial mounted parachute, which is the same as the large parachute, just mounted on the side, and this is the small parachute. This is a thermal generator. Um, it generates like uh, 60, well, like uh, one unit of charge for every second. So it's slow, but it happens all the time. It, it generates it constantly. You have your will, then you have all these different solar panels. These, um, these have equivalent one of these is the same as the other one basically actually exactly the same and it's just it one folds out in a, um, a line and the other folds out in a uh, three by two rectangle then this is just a single solar panel you have two lights uh, this one goes further but this one spreads out more you have your lighters and then you have this it's a it's a PBX 150 xenon container this goes to the, um, where did it go? There we go. The ion propulsion drive. The ion propulsion drive uses a lot, a lot of, of electricity, but uses very little fuel. So with the uh, electrical charge you need, to be able to do a burn, you need 12 electrical units for every second of the burn. So it's pretty cool. It's a very efficient system. It's um, as you can see, it's ISP is 4200, so very efficient, but very, very low output, and um, very, very um, uh, 
needs a lot of electricity. Now come the scientific e equipment, which will be used probably later more, at more later in the game. You have your communication arrays. This one is like a dish. It folds out when you tell it to fold out. The thing is, oh, oh and this one's just a stick. So it's like, it's a. this is like the low gain antenna. This is like the high gain antenna. This can communicate further, but this is smaller. So it can communicate shorter. Um, but once you deploy them, you can't retract them. This is an accelerometer, and when you turn it on, it does take, uh, it does take, um, uh, Actually, I don't know if it does. Actually, I don't know if any of these take electricity. Uh, they may later, but it just tells you different things. It tells you the accelerometer tells you your acceleration, accelerometer. Your barometer is tells you the pressure. So if you're in outside of the atmosphere, then you won't have any pressure. You have your grav max negative gravity detector, which is just tells you how much acceleration. Uh, well, how much gravity you're in is the strength of the gravitational field. If you're in interplanetary space, it'll say null. Then you have your thermometer, too hot thermometer. And once you, uh, it just tells you temperature. You do have to turn these all on when you're in space. Uh, or, like, actually, you do have to turn these all on once you go out there. Because um, it doesn't start on its own. But, yeah, it's, it's lots of cool new stuff. As you can see. Uh, but that's all for right now. Well, let's go over. Oh, and sorry, jumping around everywhere. So you have your symmetry modes down here now, uh, your angle snap, you have your center of graph, lift, uh, uh, and thrust. So you have those. And then there's one really big thing it's action groups. Action groups are amazingly useful now. Um, what they do is, uh, here, let's build a simple rocket. What they do is they, you can bind functions to certain keys. Uh, so you don't have to press space and trust that you uh, did everything properly. Uh, you can just bind it to the keys beforehand and bam, you have, you're, you're safe. And so what we can do is we can say, okay, for custom one which is zero on my numpad but you have to go in and adjust it all yourself um, what you do is you press on the thing that you want to adjust and you have all these different options you can toggle engine shut down the engine activate engine jettison the engine or make it so it doesn't gimbal I'm going to toggle the engine so that's my zero and then my custom two I'm going to have as my decoupler and so I'm going to decouple it and then I'm going to go and take um, let's grab this parachute right now. And then I'm going to take this parachute, put that as my custom 3, and press deploy, and then 4 to cut the chute. Okay, so let's try this out real quick. And if you're doing a space plane, it's basically needed for, like, single-stage orbit space planes. It's really hard to deal with them without that. And so I'm going to just put it up to full power and press the SAS. I am not going to press space. This is me pressing zero on my numpad. There you go. I'm pressing zero again. And that's, it's cool. It's because you don't have to press X and then throw it back up. You can just press zero over and over again. And it'll just stop it. And then you press zero again. It's full throttle already. So let's decouple. This is me pressing one. There we go, we're decoupled, and we can't recouple, so, eh. And then we can press, once we're going down, I'll press 2. There we go, 2, there is the parachute, and we're falling. And then, if I press 3, oh no, the parachute's gone, and we're falling, and Jebediah is going to die inevitably, unless we press end flight, yay, oh, end flight. There we go. And, um, yeah. That's all for the new stuff with the VAB. Uh, I will be going over some more tutorials, especially with like space planes and things like that, because those are quite fun now because of all the new dynamics that they've gone into. I also will be doing more interplanetary travel. But if you guys uh, want to uh, want to request certain uh, uh, certain tutorials, just put that in the comments below. 
Uh, if you want to see more of this stuff, be sure to subscribe, and if you thought this was useful, give it a like or a favorite. It really does help. Thanks a bunch, guys. Uh, this is Sonder Marken. See you next time.